Hello, welcome to Rob's Models. I'm Rob and today we're going to be having a post build summary and review of Airfix's 1 to 70 second scale Tiger 1 and this is code A02342 and this kit was released just before Christmas last year, Christmas 2020 and between Christmas and New Year I built it. I actually did an unboxing and review of the initial sprues when it actually first came out and that was literally about a week before Christmas and you can actually have a watch of that here and uh, if you have seen it or if you haven't um, I've got to admit um, when I actually done the review I wasn't massively impressed with the kit there were some areas that actually did draw my attention but there was a few bits that um, I think Airfix could have done better I've seen other people since review the kit and they seem to have been um, maybe a little bit more um, maybe a little bit more positive about it than I am. However, it was one of those things where I thought I wanted to actually do a build of it first and I find that's the best way to actually really review a kit is to see what it actually goes like, not what it looks like when you actually uh, take it out the box. So, um, I have now built it and it didn't take long at all. Uh, so here it is. So uh, let's just sort of go through the build first of all. Well, the whole build process, I actually live streamed on my Twitch account. If you want to follow me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Models. So uh, over the Christmas period, this is what I built. And I've got to say, it did actually go together quite nicely. However, it wasn't without issue. So one of the very first issues was right at the very beginning. I will say I am not an armor person. So what I mean by that is actually, this is actually my first tank that I've made, uh, especially in this scale of one to 72. It's quite a small scale for a tank, not your normal one to 76 scale that often armor tends to be at uh, those smaller scales. Uh, one of the very first things I did actually find was literally right on part one, which was putting the sidewalls onto the bottom of the chassis that actually didn't quite fit and there was actually going to be a bit of a gap running down. So I did need to do a little bit of a sanding just to thin that little part where the bend is just to get it to fit actually into the little recess design for that groove to go into which was a surprise but i must admit that was pretty much the only major fit issue i did have there was a few bits where i must say i do feel so perhaps some of the alignment was a little bit out um partly it could be argued well hang on this is something which was made out of pretty much you know one inch thick sheets of steel which were crudely welded together uh, but I just sort of feel that sometimes, especially around some of the front areas, things maybe were sitting a little bit, a little bit more proud, a little bit more rustic perhaps than uh, perhaps I was expecting. Talking of the sort of the main moulding as well, I do find it a little bit odd that some of the um, finer details, some of the auxiliary equipment was actually moulded on. For example, the shovel on the front, got some bolt cutters, uh, little hammer, those sort of things as well. Some of the tools were actually moulded on and I can see yes they would have been very very small to add on afterwards however I just think it was kind of like lost some of the finesse and to have to try to sort of paint to pick out some of them is actually you know so small it is a bit tricky and I do think that uh, the ropes the tow ropes were you know and were able to be added on afterwards I do think some of those larger bits at least could have actually been added on not molded on because it does mean that you're going to be painting the camo over those parts and then picking it out individually afterwards and i think as this is actually a set which is also being designed um, with a starter kit in mind as well where you have actually got the more easy to assemble tracks as well to go with it which i assembled but i didn't actually paint um, i just assembled literally two halves sandwiched together uh, they really are a bit more lacking on the detail. I believe what they'll be doing is uh, releasing this as a starter kit option without the treads that you've actually got to make up yourself without the separate road wheels which are more detailed and probably just come with a sprue for those which literally the two parts click together and put on. When it actually comes to the build I, um, it actually took me less than an hour to do the actual gluing and by that I mean the taking off the sprue uh, I'd always be sanding it down to make sure I got a good fit test fitting that's why I noticed that those bits needed to be filed down before I could put it together 
but the actual sticking plastic together, not including the tracks which are done separately, uh, but to get to this stage using these tracks, that actually took way less than an hour and I was live streaming it, interacting with people in the chat. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, quick build. When I actually then come to the painting, uh, I first of all primed it with uh, the primer, which is the AK Interactive uh, white primer. And then once that was dried, and that's a micro filler, so that gave me a good solid base to work on. Uh, went for the white one because it's gonna be, next was gonna be going over the yellow color. And the yellow color, I actually made up myself from Vallejo paints from when I was making a swim bargain um, earlier this year, or well, actually earlier last year, over summer 2020. I made a Tamiya 1 to 35 scale swim bargain, essentially a swimming car, and I realised that this is basically going to be having the same three tone paint as in it's the yellow with the brown and the green going on top. As I'd already mixed that up, I used that. Once that had actually had two coats on, I then went on to Tamiya paints. Now, based on what the swim bargain codes gave for the Tamiya, that would mean that the brown would have actually been XF64 with the um, the green colour being XF61. Now I didn't actually have XF64 in at the time so I actually used um, XF68 which was actually is a little bit lighter than the XF64 and that worked quite well. Uh, when I'd done the swim bargain though I did actually use the XF61 for the green but found it a bit too dark uh, so actually had in hindsight um, had actually said I wish I'd actually use the XF26 which was lighter. Um, so actually this time because I realised it was going to be the same colour options, went for that. And I must admit, once I'd actually then put the weathering on, it did darken that green down. Uh, I did try to um, look at options to how I could do the paint with this. And I've got to say, um, it was very confusing. Now, I did want to start trying to mask up using the paint um, camo guide there. And uh, I realised that in this scale, that was just going to be impossibly small. Um, so I started trying to do it with uh, masking tape. I then tried to use blue tack, as I normally would do for a plain camouflage. Uh, just realised it was too small and realised I was just going to actually have to do brush painting. So I used very watered down, um, say watered down, I used um, isopropyl alcohol just to thin the paint. So it was a lot thinner and then painted it. And as I was painting, I was finding problems. Basically, this camo pattern is more of a suggestion of what sort of style it would be. And in actual fact, if you compare the camo on here to the box art, it also isn't the same. Uh, where there's various, like on the box art, you've kind of, it is great box art, no one can deny that. There's a green V shaped right in the middle and a larger patch of green. Uh, on the front there, there's no sort of brown V and the large patch of green goes across horizont horizontally, whereas there, they're vertical stripes, pretty much running right the way around. So it's more of a suggestion. And as well, if you follow some of these cup um, projections up and down and across, they don't actually uh, match up completely. They're kind of more implied. Some of these, if you were to follow some of these lines up the side, when it actually comes to wrapping around, they're, they're not on the overhead which is quite odd. So it's more just suggesting that there's the vertical stripes that kind of wrap over. So once I realised that, I realised I could go freehand, but follow the style that's implied. As in, when you look on the sides, there's more of like the tiger stripes running down. Um, and then when you're looking down, those stripes are sort of like running across. So once I realised that, I could then paint First of all, I put the brown down, done the stripes going across, made sure that when the turret was on, those actually stripes did line up. And I've got to admit, after the first coat of brown, the brown was looking very, very patchy, and I was worried. I went over it the next day with another coat of very, very thin down XF68, and suddenly it bulked it all up. The second layer made it a lot more solid. And then I repeated that with the XF26. And again, the first coat looked very patchy and I genuinely felt as I was doing it that I was messing the model up. But once I'd actually got that on, um, the second coat, it really did start coming together. However, it still had a bit of a glossy sort of finish on that. I then, just to take the shine off and to give it a more uniform look over, gave it a very, very, very light coat of XF57 buff 
which again was watered down with the isopropyl alcohol, 99% IPA, a very, very light misting of that. And that um, really did sort of knock it back. And actually what I did is to give it a coat of um, essentially floor polish. What I use is the Pledge floor polish that I picked up from Sainsbury's a few years back for a couple of quid. Uh, it's not the best gloss to use, however I find it gives enough of a gloss for decals to go down nicely, uh, but not too shiny afterwards, and you can sort of weather it away without having to be putting on a flat or a matte coat on top of it afterwards. Decals went down really nicely. They were a little bit thick, but they are actually, uh, the decals are by Cartograph, it says on the box, and those are really good quality decals. They felt thick, but once they went down, uh, there was also a few complex curves that they had to wrap around. There's only a couple of decals, but that 007 had to go over a little, um, a few little little blumps and bumps. And uh, with the application of that and only two applications of the Microsol, it really settled in there and really locked on over those um, blumps and bumps. And the carrier film is just invisible. Before I got onto the weathering, I did build the tracks up. The tracks themselves I painted uh, with MRP gunmetal. So I used that for the trucks themselves, as well as the bits that were going to be going onto the side of the turrets as well. Uh, so they come out all right after two coats of that. So that gave a more, it's not a real shiny metal, but it's a more of a black metal. I did, however, find that I did have um, quite a few issues building the tracks up and trying to do it it really was um yeah basically i don't know whether i'd made a mistake i took bits off the screw before painting them so perhaps i got things a bit out of order and um therefore perhaps i think lost some of the the numbering system either that or there was a mistake in the instructions i'm still not completely too sure on it um in the end when I realised that the tracks weren't linking up properly as they should do, they uh, go around in sections. So that's just the, a sort of the overview of them, but they're done in much more smaller parts, giving later on in the book, uh, there's a, uh, in the instructions, you really do see how they individual sort of tracks are sort of like, you've got your main parts uh, are actually um, sort of put after you build up your wheel set. Uh, which actually went together very easily but again a few little fit issues i did need to file down a few little bits just for those wheels to go over there um just to make sure they did fit some of them did seem that did seem to spread that cogged drive wheel a little bit too much so i did need to do a little bit of filing test fitting but nothing major nothing to really write home about but i think when i was then putting on the top and the bottom parts of the tread although there's little dots there little pins that go into location holes on the top and bottom of the wheel set Although I followed it and it seemed to go into those wheel sets, uh, when it then ended up coming on putting the smaller bits of track around, uh, things weren't fitting. So in the end, before the Tamiya Extra Thin Blue had really hardened on, I just found myself having to peel it all off completely, taking it right back to just the pile of parts and the wheel sets on there, and then work through, literally through the instructions away and then worked through logically as to how I could build that, playing, paying attention to where the tracks were, the cogs were, um, where the little location tabs were, and working the logic through on that one. So it might just be my mistake from taking the bits off the sprue and getting them out of order when I was painting them, or just maybe something went on the wrong place and it just knocked everything else out of sync. However, once I'd spent a little bit of time just working through it, um, I managed to get them on and that was actually live streamed on New Year's Eve in the evening. So that was quite fun actually trying to do that. However, once that went on, it was simply a case of then slotting those in place. Before actually slotting them on, I had actually got a product that I hadn't really used before that I'd bought earlier in the year, which is the Tamiya weathering stick. And this is the mud one. And uh, I thought I'd give this a go because you essentially take the lid off and you twist it almost like a lipstick or a lip balm a uh, pen sort of comes out which is it's a sort of a greasy um, pigment in there and what I found I could do was to you can sort of see little clods of mud in there you put it in and then sort of like almost twist it twist it in so you're actually leaving little little chunks of it in embedded within the uh, within the grooves of the track and it gives quite a good 
technique. Now, this isn't a real muddied up, dirtied, weathered one. However, it is a, you know, it is being used. That's the idea. So this was, you know, summer 1944 in Normandy. So yes, it was in battle, but it was summer. It wasn't a great summer. There was no lots of rain and all that sort of thing. So there would have been mud. It would have been going over a battlefield, but not a real muddy field, sort of, um, not, not absolutely caked in mud sort of thing. So that's what I've tried to go for. So that went on there. I then gave it um, a bit of a wash using the panel line accent and this is the Tamiya dark brown one and this is quite good just for highlighting details in there and uh, picking out areas pretty good for in the wheels as well as also Flory models wash as well first of all the brown one and that also helped just knock off the shine from the floor polish so a combination of the Flory models one just to give the main overall dirty sort of look that got into the main recesses and then using this to get into the more smaller ones like those grills at the back that sort of thing as well just to really start pulling out a bit of that extra sort of detail in there put out some of those um, details around those molded in that's um bits that are on there put the ropes on those sort of things so it all actually started to come together and i've got to say once it's actually done it's a solid little kit i am really uh, pleased with how it does actually look as i've said i'm not an expert when it comes to making uh, kits um tank kits this is my first tank kit and to be doing one in one to 70 second scale i think is actually Although, yes, is easier, especially for a starter side of thing, especially when you're using these quick put together tracks, which can be just knocked up, put on and painted. Yes, the whole build, plastic, not including those tracks, but all of that part can be done in way less than an hour. And, and the painting, uh, because it is also more of a freeform painting, will lend itself really well to being a starter kit because it's not like people have to really follow the camo patterns or stick within the lines. You can put down that base of the yellowy colour and then go over with the browns and the greens to really build it up. Uh, the detail in here is actually pretty fine. I must admit, after doing it, I wasn't completely convinced that this was actually a brand new tooling, especially just how chunky these seemed. However, having sort of then made it, there was still a few minor fit issues, um, but they were minor and they were things that, uh, if you just simply test fit and file, you will get away from. But, for example, that very first part when I had to put those two sides onto the main chassis bit, if I hadn't bothered testing those and filing those down, that would have spread that first bit out maybe a millimetre or two. I don't know whether it would have made much difference, but it then could have had the knock-on effect of the top not fitting on quite so well. You might have then started to have a few more fit issues. Overall, it is solid. It looks like a Tiger One tank, which is good. Of course, the turret moves around and the barrel can go up and down as well. So you can play with it if you wish to. Again, perfect for a sort of a starter set as well. So pleased with how that is. Uh, I think it retails for about £15. Um, so you're probably going to be therefore really still looking at a somewhere between a £10-15 sort of mark, depending on where you're buying it from. But overall, I've got to say, following on from not being completely convinced when I was doing the out of the box summary, I do now feel was so actually, I'm a little bit more happier with the kit. Something about it when I was just going through the box, it just kind of wasn't seeming quite right. Um, especially as it was brand new tooling. Now I'm not gonna say this is perfect and some people are absolutely gushing over it and saying that these are wonderful. I think that they are good. However, I do think there's a few little areas that could just have a few little tweaks, only minor, but I do think those are things that maybe would just lift it a little bit more. However, for 172, for what the, the marketplace that Airfix are aiming for this, you know, for that sort of like, you know, this is quite a detailed one. However, take off those, just use those bits. It's an excellent starter kit. And I think it will be coming out as a starter kit. I'm not sure, but I think they will be releasing it as a starter kit without those uh, more detailed um, running uh, wheels and tracks and just coming out with those with the, the paints just to do the three-tone camo and a brush. And for that, that would be for the nephew who's getting into making models, wants to knock up something over a weekend, then actually, bang, that is absolutely perfect. So for my um, little excursion into um, making armor, making tanks of this scout, I've got to say I'm actually quite pleased with it. 
Uh, I do recommend it, definitely have a go. Uh, it's not put me off of doing armor at all. And I've got to say, following on from the review, I do feel more positive having built it. And I think that's why one of the, um, I think that's why it is important really to review a kit by actually building it, not just looking at the sprues in the box because I felt some of the details weren't quite as fine, but now I've got it on there. Now I've got the washers on there. And now I've spent that little bit of extra time. It is now, um, yeah, I'm a lot more happy with it now than what it was when I was actually putting it together, let's put it that way. So it's not been without faults, but uh, definitely the positives outweigh those faults. So I do recommend that. So that is Airfix's uh, Tiger One. It's in one to 70 second scale, and the reference is A02342. I've been Rob, hope you've enjoyed that. Happy modeling and look forward to seeing you again soon.